Hello, it's Davey Mooney coming to you from the University of North Texas where I run the jazz guitar program. I'm a Benedetto artist, Sunnyside Records artist, Mel Bay, I got two books, Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary, and the prequel, Into the Labyrinth, An Anatomy of Position Playing for Jazz Guitar. Uh, been doing some videos on based on tunes from the latest record, Way Back. Um, it's a record I recorded down in Brazil some great Brazilian musicians and John Ellis on saxophone, uh, etc. I've done videos on, let's see, uh, the title track, Way Back, um, sort of ballad, doom scroll, a bossa nova tune I wrote called Check Up, and uh, this may be the last one I do, I don't know. Some of the songs on the record are so uh, arranged and have so many different parts, they're kind of hard to explain just on the guitar and uh, you know the way I, I do these videos. But uh, let's see, I want to talk about the song La Bruja, which is, you know, I didn't write the tune. It's a, as far as I, I can tell, sort of a traditional public domain uh, song from uh, Mexico. And I was down in Jalapa, which is the capital of uh, the state of Veracruz, in June of last year, of 2022. It's 2023 now, it's about, what is it, early August. Uh, still hot as uh, can be here in Denton. But anyway, uh, sorry, I digress. Jalapa, where it's, weather oh, it's really nice, y'all. Um, and in Veracruz, they have, you know, a lot of different uh, things going on, styles of music, but one is called Son Jarocho. And I really love the style of music. I mean, I've never studied it. Um, in any type of, of detail really, but I just like listening to it. And when I knew I was gonna go down to Jalapa for a month, uh, it was a collaboration I did with a great guitar player named uh, Roberto Sanchez Picasso. Shout out to Roberto. He teaches at the University of Chihuahua now. Um, I kind of was thinking, you know, we're gonna collaborate. I'm gonna bring my modern jazz thing, and he's a great modern jazz guitarist too. But you know, it's Jalapa, and like the music of Jalapa is one of the musics, um, Son Jarocho is a very, uh, you know, folkloric uh, style along with fandango and, and, and everything. Um, I remember thinking like, man, maybe there's some way I can adapt one of these songs. And uh, as I tell audiences when we play this, you know, adapt and try, but also try not to ruin it, you know, because sometimes when you start mixing styles together, which is something I love to do, um, if there's a style that I like, I want to kind of, you know, pay, pay respect to it and also kind of perform it, but not pretend to play Son Jarocho like a musician who has studied that music or is part of that culture, but you know, it's like I dig it, you know, I want to uh, pay tribute and, and, you know, I get a kick out of it, basically. <laughs> but you don't want to ruin it, you know, you don't want to put just like Giant Steps changes on a folkloric melody and call it a day, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I also did this uh, a couple of years ago uh, with a group from UNT, we went to, uh, uh, to China, we went to Shanghai, and uh, part of the collaboration that we did, it was sort of a jazz and classical collaboration, it was a lot of fun. We spent like 10 days over there, a long time. And uh, we did, an, uh, did a jazz adaptation of a, a Chinese song called, or a, a very traditional uh, Chinese song, Jasmine Flower. And uh, I recorded that on uh, the live record, live at National Sawdust. It's called Zona Lesci, which is, you know, um, that's the eastern zone of Sao Paulo, which is where I stay when I go to Brazil. So I thought I was being clever because it's the eastern zone and we were in China. But I remember it was funny that we performed those tunes. I did Jasmine Flower and other people in the group did sort of jazz adaptations of traditional Chinese melodies. I suppose uh, to try to kind of uh, you know, a respectful gesture of, well, we dig your guys' culture and your guys' music, and here's our take on it. And I remember we asked somebody at a club once, like, what they thought, and they were like, man, what are you guys doing? Like, why are you taking these <laughs> our songs and taking solos on them and messing them all up? So I thought that was hilarious. And also, you know, I am sensitive to, to that. Okay, that being said, so uh, I love the song La Bruja. It's so, like, scary. It's like this witch who's like a vampire and she's eating all these children. It's, uh, it's intense. Hold on a second, I'm gonna unplug the uh, refrigerator. I hope you don't mind because it's making a lot of noise, but. 
These videos are really live, y'all. I would edit that out, but you know that wouldn't be keeping it real. And uh, I was thinking, I settled on this song one because I just thought it was a cool tune, and uh, it's that minor kind of waltz vibe. And I like minor songs, and I like waltzes. And one of the things I like about Son Horocho is rhythmically, like for instance, La Bruja is basically harmonically the versions that I've heard. Um, there's one that I uh, checked out on YouTube called uh, by Los Monarcas de Papaloapan. Um, you can you can Google that and find that. And I kind of got the basic melody. I think they do it in A minor. And there's other videos of YouTube's full of videos of people playing this tune. And it's basically like a three chord song in terms of it's just kind of one five, and then the bridge goes to the bridge. <laughs> what I call the bridge goes to four. And there's other uh, movements, but those are the basic ideas. But I love how they have this sort of hemiola, or it's, it's in three, but they put the three in like groups of, of uh, two occasionally. So you have like this, you know. It could be that. But it's kind of like, instead of just going like one, two, three, one, two, three, the first bit they go like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, three. Several versions do that. I, I don't think everyone does that, but it seems like it's a pretty common thing. Grouping, you know, uh, two bars of three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, one, two, three. And I guess I think of that as hemiolic or polyrhythmic. And it's really interesting. And there's also, you know, things that they do with the, uh, the right hand that I think uh, give the music a kind of like <laughs> stutter, stutter step, stuttering feel sometimes that I find really interesting and really cool. Um, so, all right, so then I was thinking, well, I really like this tune. What can I do to adapt this? I got to give it some more chords, but I also don't want to ruin it. So the first thing I did is I came up with this bass line that I was hoping, I put it in D minor, because so D minor seemed like the right key to put it in. And I came up with this bass line, it's in three, so it's like... stutter in there so it's like one two three one two three one two three one two three and I was trying to evoke that sort of hemiolic polyrhythmic feel and also the little stutter that I uh, perceive in that music by so it's one two three one two three major 7 chord or really like over A flat so kind of like an A flat uh, major 7 sharp 5 chord and that's one of those sounds I like I often go like D minor like a, a minor 1 chord to a, uh, like in this key I would go to like B flat minor major 7 as a, as a dominant but I also like this sound it's kind of like it's kind of bluesy to me because you got that like A flat in the D minor tonality. And you know, it's, it's the blues, it's, uh, it's the bruja, you know, and she's she's doing bad things, you know, um, so you, that gives you the blues. But so that's like a little vamp that I do in, uh, in the song at the beginning, you know. And then when it comes time to do the melody, I don't put the same hemiolic thing that they do, but I go like... Like D minor, F7 sus, E minor 7 flat 5 with a natural 9 to uh, A7 flat 13. So I try to get this, you know, not put in too many uh, chords outside of the key. It's still kind of real D minor, almost like alone together or something, but. Also, maybe have like a moving line to kind of like. And then the melody goes. And 
for that part I go like a C7. So again, still in the key of D minor, and I'm not um, really reharmonizing it too much, but just kind of playing off of a uh, diminished relationships. The idea that you know A7, five of D minor, I can also kind of get in a C7, maybe an E flat seven, maybe even a G flat seven. I don't think I do that, but that relationship of uh, dominance and minor thirds related to the you know uh, dominant functionality of a diminished uh, harmony. So. Uh, so the first eight bars of the tune after that little intro, I've got D minor, F7 sus, that E minor 9, flat 5 to A7, uh, sharp 5, and then I have C7, C7 13, flat 9, playing off that diminished relationship, and then A7 to G minor, and then I put the G minor over D. Back to G minor, the next eight bars. B flat major. B minor, seven flat five with a natural nine. B flat seven. Again, trying to get some moving inner lines of like. You know, moving kind of like if I were doing a chord melody, you know, sometimes I. Uh, Reharmonize, but sometimes I just have like moving inner lines to try to make it more uh, have more going on, but not changing it and ruining it. <laughs> so where were we? So the second eight bars, you know, B flat, B minor, uh, seven flat five with a natural nine to B flat seven sharp eleven, and then A seven flat nine. because it's kind of like there's an uh, I treated it like an AAB kind of form um, you know there's different uh, things going on when you uh, in this music there's like a chorus and people sing in harmony and different things but I just went ahead and repeated it so Complicated when we're we're playing this tune in the gig. That's the part. I'm like, look, oh, guys, there's a there's a bar missing. Instead of going, so the first time I go B flat, A flat major seven sharp eleven to D minor, and the second time I go uh, B flat minor six to the D minor thing, and then so the bridge of the song. Um, and I'm looking at my chart here, so I don't get confused. But the bridge is like. If you know the original tune, it would have kind of gone to the four chord, so G minor. to change that a little bit, uh, reharmonize that. So in, in our key I went A flat major 7 to A13 flat 9 to C7 to E flat 7. trying to play off of that diminished relationship so I can put in some extra chords and have some interesting bass motion you know but also not totally reharmonize the thing and and ruin it <laughs> so
that's basically what we did. And for the solos, I tried to simplify it a little bit. Although, uh, I remember I went through several versions of this. Even when I was down at Jalapa, I, like, changed it. And the guys, you know, it was like a three-page chart. And so we could never remember which version we were doing. But for the record, I had it. <laughs> I have it set now. So, like, the solos, I go, like, D minor, F7, E minor, 7 flat 5, A7, C7, A7, G minor. G minor, B flat, B minor, 7 flat 5 in the natural 9, B flat 7, A7, B flat, A flat, major 7 sharp 11, D minor, E flat major 7 sharp 5, and then that repeats, D minor, F7, E minor 7 flat 5, A7, C7, A7, two bars of G minor, one more bar of G minor, B flat, B minor 9, flat 5, B flat 7, two bars of A7, B flat major, A flat major 7, sharp 11, D minor. And then this time there's like a sort of second ending. Goes to the B section, A flat major, A7, C7, E flat 7, E minor 7, flat 5, A7, B flat major, G7, A flat major 7, sharp 5, A13, C13, diminished relationship, E flat 13, E minor 7, flat 5, A7. solo on that bass thing at the end but uh and you know harmonically honestly it's a lot of d minor i can sort of sometimes i'll zone out a little bit on the changes um because you know d minor bluesy works pretty well through the whole thing you know on the on the b section i like to outline those dominants a little bit <laughs> It's all kind of the way I uh, reharmonized it or, you know, embellished on the one, four, five minor vibe that was going on in the song is just with diminished things where you can kind of get away with just rocking out on bluesy D minor the whole time. There's no major modulations really. So anyway, I'm going to play a few choruses on this thing for you. Um, and of course, you can see the version on the album. Uh, John Ellis plays bass clarinet on this. He, he doubles that bass melody. And it's great Felipe Silvera solo. I got a solo. Um, Paulinho takes a short drum solo. And you know, I think we, uh, we didn't ruin it. We didn't ruin the song, y'all. <laughs> I actually really like it. And we played it on this tour in uh, Mexico City. People seem to dig it. So, all right, hope you do too. Thank mm -hmm. you. 